Good morning, everybody. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in Central California. May he richly bless you all today. Um, you know, con technical content has been sadly lacking lately, and I get that. I, I know that can be kind of frustrating. Um, the reason I've done that is because uh, I've, I've kind of revealed a lot about the internal machinations of our network and um, gotten a few borderline threats, online threats, people saying, well, you're revealing too much and I should try to hack into your network and, you know, teach you a lesson and don't need that. So I want to do the technical content and talk about what I do day to day. Um, but sadly, there's just some people out there that have uh, appealed to the paranoid side of me and uh, made me kind of back off revealing too much internals. So I came up with one today that's um, a little more technical. I'll rearrange my windows here so I can see my notes um, without revealing too much inside. So what I'm going to talk about today is how we do routing on our uh, network. So let me share something with you. Where did it go? Okay, let's share. What will we share? We're gonna share this. Let's share this little drawing here. So there, okay, there it is. Now you can see that. So this, isn't gonna, this is gonna be more of a logical view of how we do routing. I'm not gonna do like a, you know, network centric view of it but logically this is how it works um so we've got our core switches and well you know i should add one thing here um get back online let me add a shape here sorry I need to add just a little regular regular old switch out here which is where the users live. And Edge switch. Oops, there we go. Okay, yeah, so those are edge switches and uh, they're all gonna be out here. So anyway, we'll, we'll get to that. Sorry, just one, one more thing I wanted to add. So, We've got our users out here on these edge switches and they want to go somewhere. And other than within their own VLAN, how do they get anywhere? So that's why we put a default gateway and a subnet mask in our, in our network configs is so we can go somewhere other than our local network. So they want to go somewhere. So how, how do we decide where to send them? Um, I'm sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, okay. So let's say that there's a user out here on a workstation on this switch, and he wants to get to one of our servers. So what he's going to do is, first of all, traffic's going to come over and, and hit the core switch. Uh, it's going to bypass this firewall initially because all these edge switches, you know what, let me do this. Let me take this line and actually put it like right over here. And we're going to put this guy right over here. And whoops, let me move this line here. Sorry, a little housekeeping. All right. So edge, edge switches are going to come in here. It's going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, hit the core. And the core is going to say, OK, your destination is our, one of our internal subnets. And it doesn't even care that it's a server. It's just going to see it's an internal subnet. So anything internal, I'm going to send you to this guy, the segmentation firewall. And what does the segmentation firewall do? It basically routes between our VRFs. And VRFs is what, a virtual routing facility, virtual router facility, something like that. Virtual, It's a virtual router, basically. That's what a VRF is. And we've got, ooh, how many do we have? We've actually got five of them. I've only got like four of them here just because let me, we have one other to IOT. I just got tired of making these little circles. 
Um, so the user wants to get to one of the circles, or wants gets to get to one of the VRFs, which is depicted as a circle. So he's hit the core switch. Core switch says, oh, you want to go to an internal network. I'm going to send you to the segmentation firewall. Segmentation firewall says, oh, you're wanting to go to a server. So I'm going to send you into the server VRF, and uh, which is technically back here on the core switches, but this guy can controls access to it. So it'll send it right back to the core switch, which will send it right back out to a server switch where one of the, all the servers are, and that's how they would get to a server. So they'll bounce from core to segmentation, back to core, and then over to whatever switch the server is on. And same type of deal. If, if when they pick up their phone and the phone needs to talk to a, a voice server, it's going to do the same thing. It's Oh, you're going to the internal network. You're going to a, a different subnet in our internal network. I'm going to hit you at the segmentation firewall. Segment, you hit the segmentation firewall, sends you over to the voice VRF, sends you to whatever switch the voice server is on. That's how that works. So now what if they want to go to the internet? Something out on the internet. They want to go to Google. So they're going to hit the core. Of course, going to say, ah, uh, nope, that's not an internal network. So I'm not going to send you to the segmentation firewall. Since it's not an internal network, my default route, gateway of last resort, is this WAN router. So it's going to send you out here to the WAN router. The WAN router is kind of like our, our edge for the, for the campus. It's, it's the edge router, basically. Sends you over to that guy. And that guy says, okay, where do you want to go? Um, do you want to go out to the WAN or where do you want to go? And um, let's see. Okay. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So you want to go to the internet. My gateway of last resort is this edge firewall. So sends the traffic over to here. And he looks at it and says, where do you want to go? Well, I want to send you out our internet connection and off you'll go since you're destined to the internet. So that's how the traffic will flow. Um, you know, there's one other thing I forgot to add here. Let me add one other thing. Um, let's say business partner and here come on come on there we go and then uh, we've also got these IPsec tunnels so I need that for what I'm going to tell you next So let's say they need to go out to one of our business partners over IPsec tunnel. It's basically going to take the same route as the internet traffic. You can go here. Nope. I, I don't know where that is. I'm going to send you here. Nope. I don't know where that is. I'm going to send you here. And then he'll make the determine the edge firewall will make the determination whether it goes out IPsec tunnel or wherever it needs to go. And I have this line listed here. Um, in the user's VRF for the edge firewall because technically that's where it lives. So if this segmentation firewall were to go down for any reason, our users would still be able to hit this firewall and get out to, to most of the things they needed to, to get to except for internal resources. So they could get out to our EMR provider, which is like our core crucial application here. That's electronic medical records. Hospitals live and die by medical records. So, um, yeah, they need to get there. And that's the same type of deal. You know, an end user wants to go out to pull a patient's medical record. It'll hit the core. Core will send it to the WAN router. WAN router will say, oh, no, nope, I don't know where that is. It'll send it over here to the edge firewall. And then the edge firewall will send it on to 
our EMR provider's firewall. So there's another firewall there from them because we have a, a, a circuit directly to them. We don't go out over the internet or anything. That's we've they've leased a circuit and, and had it installed at our location, and uh, so it's a it's a leased line that they pay for, and uh, we well we pay for them for their service, and that's part of the service. And uh, let me make one little change here. This is kind of an oopsie. That shouldn't go there. I should go there. Right, let's move you over. So we do have a WAN. Um, so we can get to certain business partners. So not business partners. Like we have a remote clinic. We have, uh, we're owned by a, a county. So to get to county resources, county servers, you know, we'll go to the core. Of course, says, I don't know, send you to the WAN. WAN says, oh, I know where that is. And then sends it to the appropriate, you know, destination on the other end, either one of our clinics or, you know, a county server or whatever. So that, yeah, that'll take it out over the WAN. And uh, what else? What else do I want to say about this? Um, sorry, I'm looking at some internal documentation here that's got IP addresses on it that I can't really show you guys. Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. I mean, and this is this this is all okay. I left one of the crucial bits of information out till the very end here. These are all static routes, by the way. We, we don't run any sort of routing information protocol here. Um, reason being, we don't change that much. I mean, there's maybe uh, one routing change per year. I mean, it really is a very static environment. We could, we could add it, and, uh, you know, maybe the next guy will. Whoever takes over from me might want to do that. Um, the reason we didn't is these core switches. Um, they're kind of older and they don't have a whole lot of horsepower. And if you have them do too much, like, oh, say run a routing protocol, um, their CPU utilization just goes through the roof. So, um, we basically tried to keep, keep it very untaxing on these routers. Um, so yeah, it's just static and, uh, it's, it's. There actually aren't that many static routes other than um, basically all the same routes that are in this one are in this one, uh, this this one and this one. The the core and the WAN routers have pretty much the same static routing tables. Um, so the core is going to say, hey, you're out on the WAN. The WAN's going to say, oh, hey, you're, you're out here out this interface. So the difference being, you know, the destinations, but the actual routes that were that we've got set up in the tables is pretty much the same. Um, same thing for the segmentation firewall. The only, all the routes are there that would normally be in the core. So where the core would normally do all the internal routing, we, we do that at the segmentation firewall. So if I add a new VLAN, say, to the core, then I've got to add the new VLAN over here. And I've got to add the VLAN up here in the edge because Let's say somebody is coming back from the county and they're trying to get to one of our users. It's going to come here to the WAN router. WAN router's going to ask the edge firewall, hey, where is that person? The edge firewall is going to come back with the route or tell it where to go, which is going to be the core. And then the core is going to send it to the segmentation. And the segmentation is going to send it to the user's VRS, VRF. One second. Ah, coffee activated. Um, yeah, so like I said, just all the internal routes are, are, are set up here in the segmentation via our firewall. So every VLAN has a route set up in the routing, static routing table in this firewall. Every other route that we need to know about, that we need to get to, um, is set up here in the edge firewall. And like for our AMR provider, there's probably 20 or so routes, different subnets that we have to route to. 
Um, IPsec tunnels, we've probably got roughly another 20 of those. So naturally, those routes are going to be set up in the firewall. You can't set up the tunnel without setting up a route to it. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty much how we do it. We maintain routing tables in these two switches just don't hardly ever change. New VLANs, we have to update the uh, static route table in, in these two firewalls. And uh, clear as mud, that kind of give you an idea of how, how we do routing here. A little complex, um, said maybe the next guy <laughs> can clean it up a little bit. Um, but this is how management at the time, five years ago, wanted this done. And now uh, what we're doing is basically we're, we're pushing firewall duties and routing duties out, out to the cloud with Zscaler. Um, had a demo yesterday of how, you know, you'd be able to remote desktop to your machine from anywhere, anywhere in the world without having to connect to a VPN or a VPN client, anything like that. Um, as long as you have the Zscaler client installed on your machine, you tell it, hey, I want to go to this, you know, my local, my desktop at work. And you put in your desktop's name and put it into a Microsoft Remote Desktop uh, client, and boom, it connects you because <laughs> it's all through their cloud. So you, you, their Zscaler client connects you to their cloud. You do all your internet surfing through their cloud, and uh, your desktop client at work is connected to that cloud, and uh, you just go straight to your client. You, so you have like two hops to the cloud to your client. Uh, or your work, your desktop. So it's pretty cool. Um, one thing I'm not too sure is what it's going to do to our internet utilization because they want to put this client on 2,500 desktops, 2,500 plus, plus or minus 2,500. And uh, all traffic is going to be routed over to the internet and back. So not quite sure how that's going to work out won't be my problem. It's going to be the next guy's problem. So uh, I imagine they're going to have to um, up the up the bandwidth. They're going to have to go to a higher, uh, uh, a faster connection. The county will. And this is a county initiative. It's, just, it's not something the hospital decided to do. It's our owners, the county, um, decided that this is what we're going to do. So they're, they're rolling it out countywide, all the departments. Hospitals considered a, de a department in the county. So the hospital department, sheriff's department, um, public works department, registrar of voters, every everybody is uh, going to get this at some point. But uh, for some reason, we're <laughs> we're leading the way. Uh, but that's because we, we just have the best staff in the county, um, bar none, as a hospital. has got the best IT folks and uh, the fastest reacting um, we we don't run like a county entity. We run more like a private enterprise entity here, which means uh, we get things done fairly quickly and efficiently. So that's all I got for this week, guys. Um, if you have any questions, uh, post it in the comments. If you liked what you saw, do me a favor, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. It's all good. And uh, we'll see you all next week. Uh, wait a minute, let me stop sharing so I can say God bless. And where is this stupid thing? There it is.